My brother and me, this concept they were making up where there's a train that travels all over America and stops at every major city, and that's where the only place you can get food <laughs> is this food train. So, like, running with the bit for like 20 minutes, and Griffin says, Snack Piercer is what he started calling it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like, I was like That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever hear about the uh, the Amazon Prize truck? Uh, sorry, the Amazon Prime truck, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's like an ice cream truck that just has random Amazon products, and they sell it out of the truck if you're a Prime member, but they carry very specific things that like people can't get easily, like the mini NES and shit like that. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. What kind of capitalist <laughs> garbage is that? And they were joking about a giant bomb being just like the one guy Vinny just freaks out and he's like he's like, what the fuck is this? Like it's a Nintendo product, not the prize for winning the running man. Like, yeah. like what are we doing? <laughs> it's called the Amazon Treasure Truck. That's the Amazon Treasure Truck. Yeah. <laughs> wow. What a slap in the face. Mm -hmm. I fucking hate him. <laughs> Like, Speaking of Amazon and like dystopian futures, do you see that new thing they have? It seems like the coolest idea, but also the most uncomfortable idea, where Amazon has like a a store, like a Seven Eleven equivalent kind of, On but like a little more uppity. No, it's a store. It's uh -oh. a store. But like, in order to go in, you have to have an Amazon account. And it like face scans you when you walks in and figures out who you are, and then you just walk around the store and pick up what you want and walk through like a metal detector essentially, and it'll scan <laughs> little things they put in all the products and just charge them right to your Amazon account. So there's no cashier. Oh my god! But let me get this straight: Amazon built their whole company on the fact that you don't have to go anywhere to any get anything. Yeah. I don't know. So Amazon has still a don't bunch have to of talk to anyone. I guess they have a bunch of storefronts now. It's like a weird. Okay. It's like a weird cyclical thing. Like it's like. We talked about like, oh, you know, like Netflix uh, and Hulu are designed yeah, to get rid of cable, cable, but now there's again. so many streaming services, they'll just package them all together, and it's just cable again. It's like yeah, capitalists so just find a way to cycle back. <laughs> so at some point, these stores are like, we're gonna need some staff, and then, <laughs> yeah, and then, it just and then like, the yeah, and then store. Amazon at the department store, and then they're like, wait, you know, we should take this online, and it's like <laughs> Amazon online. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I want to follow, like... Yep, that's, that's <laughs> capitalism. Cyclical nightmare of oppression fucking over and over again. Oh my god. Alright, guys. The setting for our story today is late 2017. Reddit. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> and all is not right with the Force. And no, I'm not talking oh, about The Last I quit. Jedi. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> but rather the other high-profile Star Wars release that season. Solo. Which apparently fucked up everything so hard that parent company Disney and then even some governments once again had to come in and say, Hey, I'm referring, of course, to EA's Star Wars Battlefront 2. Not to be confused with EA Star Wars Battlefront 2. Without the trademark symbol. This is important. <laughs> Which came out in 2005. No, the first one was... The first one wasn't EA, was it? Yeah. Uh -huh. It was published by Electronic Arts, yeah. wasn't it? And it has the same... It has EA no, in the... No, it's published it's, by LucasArts. LucasArts developed it, but then... No, didn't. Pandemic developed it. Yeah, Pandemic. Oh, I could have swore. Are you sure? Are you sure? Have the EA symbol in it? Right, Remember we had them side by side on my Xbox? Yeah. So we were looking at them. The only difference is... The, I think they both even had the same the Roman numerals. Like they didn't even. Yeah, yeah. yeah they didn't even change the fucking thing. <laughs> but anyway, that that was just to clarify. I'm still mad though because I just googled Battlefront two and that what was did a you mistake. Think was gonna... <laughs> for the for the 2005 video game of the exact same name, see Star Wars Battlefront two 2005. <laughs> uh, I played some today actually. Yeah. Of the, the 2005 one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so good. It is good. Uh, developer Pandemic Studios, publisher LucasArts. Okay. Hey. I, I knew. I mean, I knew new Lucas. Arts was the the, the PSP studio, version was developed by Savage Entertainment. What a good company name! What's, what did Savage do? Don't they make hoodies for fucking preteen? They cunts? created. <laughs> <laughs> I meant boys. Yeah. Damn. I mean, <laughs> they did the PlayStation Three port of Rock Revolution. Wait, I'm thinking of Supreme. Wolf. Sorry, <laughs> Supreme. No, there's that one guy, on the, one asshole on YouTube whose merch line is just the Supreme logo, but it says Savage on it, 
and he does prank videos, and every time somebody's like, why would you do that to me? He just rips it off, and it's just a savage. It's the oh, worst. I hate, Jesus. I hate life. <laughs> But any, anyway, the, the, the topic today, the game that we're talking about, this is the much-anticipated sequel to the 2015 reboot of 2004's Star Wars Battlefront called Star Wars Battlefront. <laughs> 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 Fuck all video games, like, really? <laughs> That's kind of funny. It ties into our cyclical conversation. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, I remember where this yeah. all came in. But but I'm sure many uh, of you are already aware, at least of some of the controversy around this one, concerning just how loud the backlash was. Honestly, th this may have been the worst I have personally ever seen since maybe Mass Effect Three. It's hard to say, and that being I think another this was worse than Mass you think Effect Three. So? Yeah. Fan lashback, and that being yeah, another, that probably. was also an Electronic Arts release. Funny enough, but. Huh? <laughs> but so let's find out just why exactly everybody was so fucking pissed, which is what we do best. This is Hot Button. I'm Randall Beatrice, here as always with Austin Blakesley yeah, yeah. and Chris Anantuano. I'm hosting today. Yes. Now, Chris, before you, you <laughs> awaken us with your research this fine Sunday afternoon in our beautiful new studio. I, Fr Friday. Just pretend like we recorded it oh, and released okay. it in like a, a second. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's fr hold on, let me do the math. It's Friday, August. Uh, uh, uh. I thought you were going to call me out that I said Awaken Us, which was not intentional. <laughs> I, I, I realized that. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but I do have a quick little poll for all of us to kind of launch with. I just genuinely want to know. What was your guys' opinion of Star Wars as a property in 2017 specifically? And were either of you looking forward to the launch of this mm, game? Okay, I'll go first. I okay. thought that Battlefront 2 was going to be trash because Battlefront 1 was kind of trash. That's harsh. A lot of people thought okay. that. There was some disappointment around that reboot for sure. I, but I don't know. There was, it depends that was what you're very... talking about because we'll get to it, but I played the open beta. Yes, yeah. That will get referenced in this story. So I if did you're as talking well. about the actual launch of the game, I was not excited because I didn't like the beta. I remember the um, E3 stuff kind of didn't hit us as hard as it could have. Yeah. I was excited for the story mode, which yeah, me too. ended up being the worst part. And I was excited <laughs> for The Last Jedi, mm -hmm. which ended up being the best Star Wars movie that month. Ever. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> it was the best Star Wars movie released past 2016. <laughs> eh? yeah, yeah, it's better than Solo. I uh, at this time, wait, was Rogue One released in 2016? Yes. Never mind. <laughs> All right, 2017 and on. <laughs> I, I liked Rogue One. I think more I know. Than I liked Rogue One better yeah. than Last Jedi. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't know. I think for me, I just I don't care. I'm not really a big Star Wars guy. Like I like Star Wars. I like sci-fi. Yeah, you're like on and fantasy. off the of Star Wars. Is actually like fascinating. To yeah, me. it's like I, I'm into it as like a sci-fi concept. But like sure. I don't know. At this point, I'm just like whatever. I yeah. don't really care about Battlefront. I don't. Did you have an experience playing the old ones, the PS2 and Xbox ones? Yes, yeah. an excessive amount. They, yeah, they were real fun. We played Battlefront 2 online, like, a lot. Yeah. Like, me and my friend were, like, very high rank, fucking slaughtering Damn, okay. people. Like, I, we had a did, lot of fun uh, playing Did you play the online. reboot when it came out? The first one? Yeah, the no. 2015 one? I no. didn't play either of these games until within the last like year ago. or two. Yeah, well, they still have people playing. I guess 2018 was probably when I played both of them. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And then I recently bought them, which I think a guy bought. I come comes up in the mm -hmm. script. I don't remember. Growing up, Star Wars meant a lot to me. I think I've said this maybe on here before that like Star Wars doesn't really feel like it belongs to me anymore. When you were a kid in like the 90s, Star Wars was one of the first, it was probably the first universe I ever got into, and that's maybe because of the way it was branded. Now every th release targeted at, at, at a mass audience is branded this way, but when I was younger, the fact that Star Wars was so multimedia was like really cool to me. So it's like oh, the, yeah. the video games and comics and Legos and and toys. That's the only and, good uh, thing George Lucas ever did was invent. <laughs> the smartest thing he <laughs> yeah, 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 but um, obviously the prequels happen, you know, and then I grew up and fell out of Star Wars. A lot of us did, even though there were some great fucking Star Wars video games in like the 2000s. Some bad ones too, of course. But Force Awakens kind of brought me back. I'm a, I'm a pretty like staunch defender of the Force Awakens. I understand it's like a people call it like a rehash or a remake or a soft reboot rather of A New Hope. But I saw that much more as passing the torch. Like I think that movie is like 
funnier and and I think like and darker and and, and than even the some of the older Star Wars movies. Like it's I love the way it's filmed. I think it's like really well edited. I like the cinematography of it a lot. Like I found the new characters charming. I, I was like all on board at this time. This was like pre Last Jedi coming out. I was very excited for Last Jedi. We also like you. I played Battlefront back then. I liked Battlefront a lot. I like the big scale battles. We're also I think battlefield players. Yeah. This is a, like essentially. Not a reskin. This not, played no. different than Battlefield. Yeah, it does. It's the newer faster. ones play a lot more like Battlefield than the old ones. That's did. true. Yeah, I mean the old ones were third person. Uh, you could switch. You could switch. Yeah. yeah, you can do that in the new ones too. That's that's right. But I thought the 2015 reboot was okay. It looked great. And yeah, it, it sounded was, great. It was fine. It's disappointing because it's it a little was, shallow. It was a lot more like the old Battlefield games, like Battlefield Two. Yeah. Instead of like. New Battlefield. Yeah. Good set pieces and stuff. Yeah. We, I mean, we have friends of ours that, like, got PS4s to play that game. Like, there was a lot of anticipation around that game, and it sold really well. Like, I don't know, I think it reviewed fine, but because there wasn't a lot to it, people fell off of it. So, like, the notion of, like, it's that game, but, like, more of it was the, yeah. the pitch really behind this. And then we watched E3 together and saw that game, and it seemed... Fine, and then no, let's not get too far ahead. This is all in the story. Okay, sorry, sorry. No, it's okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll, I mean, we'll we'll cut all this deeper. I, I just more wanted to like base how what yeah. the the moon I like Star Wars. Yeah, I like the original Star Wars. <laughs> I like Force Awakens. Yeah, yeah, that sums it up. I agree, and I also like. The, the idea of a lot of Star Wars games and around this time... Oh, there's a ton of great Star Yeah, Wars you games. mentioned LucasArts. They were gone by this point. EA had the exclusive deal. They had the license and they weren't putting out a lot. So... Mm-hmm. But, they all right. weren't. I was just thinking yeah. it's like, I'm watching Spider-Man and playing Battlefront. That could be one of two different <laughs> decades. <laughs> uh, so yeah, sorry to mean to uh, jump too far. So where did things first start to seem off for those anxiously waiting to jump into uh, those massive conquest battles? Right. So, mm-hmm. on Sunday, November 12th, 2017. Year of our Lord. Reddit user MBM Maverick posts an R Star Wars Battlefront. Quotes. Seriously. I paid eighty dollars to have Vader locked? Question mark. All right, <laughs> seems like a pretty innocent enough internet bitching, you know. Yeah. Shortly after, the EA community team responded to the post. That's the name of their account on Reddit. The intent is to provide players with a sense of pride and accomplishment for unlocking different heroes. As yeah. for cost, I remember this. We selected initial values based upon data from the open beta and other adjustments made to milestone rewards before launch. Among other things, we're looking at average per player credit earn rates on a daily basis, and we'll be making constant adjustments to ensure that players have challenges that are compelling, rewarding, and of course, attainable via gameplay. Probably the most laughable part. <laughs> we appreciate the candid feedback and the passion the community has put forth around the current topics here on Reddit our forms and across numerous social media outlets <laughs> our team will continue to make changes and monitor community feedback and update everyone as soon and as often as we can and people didn't seem very happy with that response did they no um within 24 hours <laughs> this comment becomes the most downvoted comment in the history of reddit 24 hours and oh, it's currently man. still sitting atop of the list at wow. number one at Negative six hundred and eighty three thousand <laughs> points. Um, number two on the list is a comment in the Thanos did nothing wrong subreddit, <laughs> where they literally ask people to upvote the post and downvote the comment to maintain balance. It's fucking so uh, dumb. I was confused by this at first. Yeah, they're okay. like upvote the post, downvote this comment just for balance because that's th- Thanos. Sure. Shut up. I, I still think the the that... idea behind that subreddit is pretty funny. Oh yeah, I, yeah. But... but that comment stands at negative eighty eight nine hundred and six thousand. That's not even, that's not yeah. even fucking <laughs> close. <laughs> And under that one, it's like 60,000, 70,000 area, wow. and they keep going down. So Still, nothing even holds gap, a man. torch to 683,000 It, it might take votes. forever for anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you want an entertaining read, I'll just put in here. Go check out that list of most downvoted comments of all time. It's like archived on Reddit. Yeah. Interesting controversies. And quite a lot of like heavily downvoted hate speech and weird hate defensive things, which I thought that, was that's pretty good, yeah. hopeful I, I, I kinda <laughs> for a check community that. like Reddit. Yeah. You know, but I kind of want to check that out now. You should. I read yeah. through probably almost you, all of the top like 10 remember to 20. any of like standout 
ones off just the top a lot of, your head of people or? just being like very very racist some uh, are deleted one was about some controversy with a D and d program I can't either a D and d program or a D and d app where they had like either shunned a player or called them out or did something weird to them like the company did and everybody like turned on the company <laughs> that I think that was like number three or four or something okay. like, a lot of them are worth reading into it's it's pretty interesting mm-hmm. like go check that out. Anyway, this new Reddit world record wasn't by any means the first time EA had angered its fans. That's what you talked about. Obviously, they piss them off all the time. <laughs> um, it was, however, part of a recent string of hits that they had taken over the upcoming game based off of the Attack of the Clones movie, Star Wars Battlefront 2. <laughs> there it is. Which I, uh, I that, the first one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I do recall it having a, a clone troopers right on the front cover. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but Attack of the Clones, obviously the worst Star Wars. <laughs> God. Remember we remember when we rewatched all those Austin? Uh-huh. Yeah, I've done it too. So. Yeah, I, like, so. I like the romance in Attack of the Clones a lot. It's real realistic. <laughs> it's like ham fisted and weird at all. I want to give the George Lucas Totally Knows Women Award or whatever. All right, so uh, <laughs> let's rewind a bit from this point and take a look at how two time fan voted worst company in America, Electronic Arts, got gamers riled up and more fired up about Star Wars than that time Phantom Menace and Jar Jar Binks ruined all their childhoods. George Lucas didn't ruin my childhood. <laughs> Fucking polio did. Didn't he beat Monsanto and Yeah, so that's what's... In, so I think that Bank worst company... That, I think that worst company This was fan poll, voted. It wasn't like... It yeah, was. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and it was two years in a row that I think they, yes. they won. But it is so stupid because like, yeah, like you were saying, there are... I know Citibank was no, on there. No, because real evil corporations know, are faceless. Yeah, <laughs> Santa, yeah like, and this was post fucking housing market collapse. Yeah, they, the they beat out like Bank of America, <sighs> Monsanto, Comcast. They're just yeah. a bank. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Video game fans. So I like to. My, <laughs> st- <laughs> my Star Wars game ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's those are our listeners. <laughs> Mass Effect <Sorry. laughs> like, Three's ending is horrible. Turn around, Kron. Crunch, crunch, crunch on some awful hydrogen food. <laughs> All right, so let me take a minute to preface this entire thing. This story heavily involves, and a lot of the controversies around loot boxes and microtransactions and things of that such, gambling in video games, etc. This is stuff. just the story of Battlefront 2. It's just a snapshot in this greater, still ongoing, and contentious topic in games. And our discussions are going to be part of a much bigger thing. We're definitely going to do a series on loot boxes yes, and con- uh, microtransactions. It may be way in the future when the story gets more fleshed out because yeah, every it's fucking still day ongoing. it's still yeah, always fucking news. happening. It would be like out of date by the time. Yeah. We, yeah. So that's an ongoing topic and we'll eventually get to it. So yeah. we're going to skirt a little bit of the greater issues here. We'll talk about it obviously because yeah, yeah. it's unavoidable. Yeah. But, uh, but no, well said. Yeah, we're going to keep it about this game and this launch and, and what happened there specifically. Otherwise we would be here all week and oh, so yeah. would... All you guys, yeah. So, at E3 2017, Star Wars Battlefront 2 is showcased. Mm-hmm. And after the complaint, oh, and after complaints of the first installation, which boasted laughable amount of content, fans weren't looking to get burned again. Just like I mean, you said, Austin, yeah. not interested. In I this. mean, that was their biggest problem with the first game. Yeah, but it still, has felt empty. Remember, they showed graphs to promote this shit. They're yeah. like, the numbers are higher in this game. There were like eight vehicles before, and now there are 12. Yeah, so, that's what happened when you saw, played the beta. It's funny. Oh, did they? Really? When you played the beta, it started with an unskippable movie where it was just like a pie chart, and then the pie chart got bigger and changed to a different <laughs> color, and they're like, there's like 20% to max. I was like, what? Can I just play as a stormtrooper? I don't want to look at pie graphs. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the devs made a deal to discuss this game having a single-player campaign, which is something the players were critical about the first title for not having. Yeah. Um, be, be careful for what you wish for, because that monkey's pawling gave us one of the worst fucking campaigns I've ever played. Yeah. Uh, something else they boasted so was their mean. all the DLC will be free. Yeah. Joining games like Titanfall and Halo, I'm of course referring to the ones that were out at the time, not yeah. like old no, school Halo. Was, yeah. um, no season old pass! One, two, three, Halo, you did. You had to buy those DLCs. You did, yeah. But worth it. Anyway. But they were very excitedly on stage being like, yeah. we're not like Basically, Call of Duty. Yeah, because all these new titles were kind of following this trend of these free DLC map updates, which is 
Fucking cool. Good yeah. for the players. Good for everybody. Loot boxes and microtransactions were the gaming hot button oh, of oh, the year. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> NBA 2K18s had a bunch of controversy. Uh, yeah. Destiny 2, Forza, Shadow of War had like Even a the big single fucking... player game. Yeah. yeah, Shadow of War got it a big hit yeah. in that. Uh, I read a little. It's not worth going into, but no, they basically yeah. like had items that could make you like stronger or like beat yeah. the game different. But a then... lot of people were saying that that was the thing that like. Or it was a different ending wow, that you can really? get from some things like that. I yeah. know a lot of people are saying that Shadow of War was the spark that ignited the, the yeah. battlefield. And flame. NBA 2K18 was another huge one that had like helped that community uh, because uh. like I know we don't really talk about sports games a lot because it's not really in our like repertoire. But, but you're right. It is yeah. a big portion of gamers and also mm. vocal gamers. You know, we don't think I play sports. NHL. Okay, yeah. I just meant like we don't usually talk about it. That yeah, much. but yeah. like EA is the worst of the worst when it comes to this. I mean, if they have ever, all those sports. Licenses. If you ever played a Madden or a FIFA game, that Ultimate Team shit is yes. intrusive. Did the, was was 2017 the year there was no Assassin's Creed? Because that had stuff like that too, but it was single player. No, there was Assassin's Creed. So all okay. these had uh, already origins. sparked up a bunch of fan outrage, and once again, discussions of whether this practice is gambling in video games were beginning to bubble up too. This rising distaste for the practice was strengthened several times leading up to the release of Battlefront 2. So it was inevitable that <laughs> when they came out, what they had built would be compounded with all this anger, and the pay to win model would piss people off enough that EA would become the proverbial straw that broke yeah. the camel's back. Was the, was the Overwatch conversation around it already kind of started by then? I'm not sure. I could be wrong. It is around this time because Overwatch and Battlefront both get investigated at the same time. Yeah, because that's what I thought was crazy because Overwatch was already out for exactly. years. Exactly. It had and, already been out yeah. for, uh, and like, what, almost in a year. It was 2016. Yeah, spring 2016 yeah. was Overwatch. But it was weird because it's like Rocket League and PUBG didn't get... Like investigated at that time. PUBG I, doesn't have the, the same systems. It has the PUBG's keys. is very thing, right? similar to CS:GO. Yeah. Okay. Rocket League's is very much like Overwatch's, which is surprising because it's all aesthetic, no yeah. application. So, in October, the beta for Battlefront 2 comes out, and it's one of the most beautiful games oh, I've ever yeah. seen in my it's life. Undeniable. Uh, the space battles were incredible. It was like a big soul sell for me. I imagine most of the money went into this game. The feeling and the look, which good on those devs. They and succeeded in making that game fun to play. It was yeah. the, the multiplayer sound. was the sound, fun. Yeah, sound it's, also in Dice is still sound. yeah, it's still some of the best sound design they, in the whole they business. They nailed like the musical transitions and they had like the wipes in there. Yeah, yeah. and all yeah. like the late. And that's something else Star Wars as an IP is known for too. And they have like they got all that archive Star Wars sounds, but then retooled them and remixed them to work. Oh, and yeah. I'm like it's it's really incredible. Cool little fun fact: Empire of Dreams is the best Star Wars movie ever made. That's the documentary about the making of the oh, first fuck. three. I it came watch with the uh, DVD box set when they did all the remastered DVD oh box set. They show the little models and like everything. It, in there? It's I called should... Empire of Dreams. I think it's like three hours long. It is one of the best documentaries I've ever seen in my life, and it's a complete making of. It's awesome. I need to they watch go that. into the laser sound effect, and you could do this outside. We can go outside after you want electric line cables like the cables that like oh, anchor like just telephone poles the... to the ground if you just smack one of them it's the sound of a laser gun from Star Wars <gasps> so put your good. ear up to it and just like tap it with your finger I remember the TIE hear... fighter was like something crazy <laughs> too like the hor like the whooshing of oh, the, the yeah, <laughs> yeah like I, I forget yeah. what sounds they put fun, together to fun make fun fact it. did you know that the, the doors in Halo the ones that go shoo, yeah, you open yeah. is the sound of a 1999 Toyota Camry hatchback, <laughs> the like the piston that lifts when you lift the trunk oh, door. That's so good. That's that awesome. One of the devs had like had like a the, Camry. Like, like a microphone up to yeah. your trunk. Dude, that's all it takes. A little that, clip, uh, little yeah. mics. Uh, what dude. a folly artist. That's Foley's, like the yeah. Crit, yeah folly artist is like the coolest thing. But yeah, sorry. Dice got the hard part down. Like that's like yeah. they made like they the make a great feeling, yeah. fun to play game. Like, you know? And and that game like ran well on everything. Like I know that was the year the um that was also the year the X came out and yes. I remember that was one of the first games I saw running on your, your console Austin and it was like mind blowing and yeah. Was, yeah so however this fun face was quickly melting away to show the cold skeleton of a capitalist terminator underneath <laughs> <laughs> um, that's pretty good I'm like, <laughs> players of the beta noted the return of star cards these are items that could be equipped in multiplayer that would augment the player or starfighter items like a more powerful blaster or a faster engine cooldown which is important if yeah. you're trying to run away from somebody and things oh, like yeah. that yeah, maneuvers. Um, there's items like shields that like protect you from <laughs> yeah. shit. Like grenades were yeah, a card. Grenades. Um, yeah. And these items had tiers of rarity. Um, there was like normal, 
blah, blah, up and yeah. up and up. I think it was like three or four and different I, tiers. I remember playing this beta too, like, and being really confused by this because there was no talk of this before that thing came out. And the yeah. 2015 game did not work that way. No, it did have star cards. I'm pretty sure it did. Game? Yeah, maybe it did. I, I don't know if they worked the same way. I don't think no. it worked the same way, okay. but I'm pretty sure they still had. Them. And and also because that thing we were talking about the sound and literally like that 2015 game was is a like looked and oh, played same amazing thing. Too, yeah. Star like, cards. I don't remember it. The star cards in one worked like similar that. to the burn cards in Titanfall. Okay. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where you just like play them before you that. spawn, and then like you would just like pick up random tokens around the map to turn into heroes. Yeah, and that wasn't like that. Mm-hmm. Too. Were yeah. they all burnable? Did no, they... they were like a, it was like a thing you could collect and use. It was almost like building a class from these okay. cards, and they had levels, I think, and maybe you had a but cost amount. They weren't consumable in the same way like the Halo Five no. ones were. No, no, right? no, okay, no, no. Yeah. Oh wait, yeah, no, they were your class. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, that's that's what which I... is how they worked in two. But their pitch for two was like you build out your class even more. You just have to collect more star cards to level them up, and then yeah, exactly. It, it was not super clear. No, it was uh, not. Yeah, it's like, still not. When I was still fucking around with it. <laughs> yeah, the you're just like, I don't... So, um, these items had the tiers, mm-hmm. rarity tiers, and some could clearly give advantage to players using them. And these items were found inside of, you guessed it, loot boxes. Ooh. So, fearful fans... <sighs> Assume that these loot boxes would cost money, like any smart person would, in the eventual game. Yeah. And the idea that players could theoretically have an advantage of more rare star cards by paying money was becoming a real concern. Which they were later kind of <laughs> proven right. Yeah, and they sorry. Were absolutely yeah. right. <laughs> like... um, a few days after the beta yeah. on an EA blog, they announced the removal of the rarest star cards <laughs> from loot boxes. Um, this is after fan complaining, as you yeah. saw in the beginning, the Reddit thing. <laughs> we hear you over here. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I wonder what some of the rarest ones were or what they did. Uh, one of them was some like shield. I, I, that's why I mentioned it. it was like some weird shield or that's some jetpack or something. Yeah. It was like an insane fucking advantage. Mm. Um, they pulled out the rarity, uh, the super rare cards. Like the highest ready ones and put them to where you had to gain like some weird crafting system to build them which was used with one of the sub currencies I, yeah um, i remember combining cards together and or breaking yeah. them to get yeah like so a, along with some other progression tweaks it seemed like ea was listening to the early outrage and making <laughs> changes so that's cool and promising yet but now this looming idea of microtransactions having a significant role to play was a growing shadow leading up to release not only that, but these values kept changing during press showings, too. Yeah. Like, at E3, the cost of playing a certain characters would flip around, and it was pretty nefarious. Like, whenever they showed the game to influencers and critics and people like that, everything in the game was way cheaper and easier to equip and use. Yeah. Like, I mean, you could make the argument that things like that should be disabled at those events anyway, since the time is limited and you can't have everyone there, like, grinding. Yeah. But it did present... A wrong idea of that product beforehand oh, when it's your job sure. to report on it. Yeah, like, exactly. Because the A wasn't going to say otherwise. Why would they? No, of course not. Oh, yeah, like. So you said you played the beta. Obviously, you and a bunch of other people were like, "All right." Yeah, the beta I think had I like the, the first well. mission of the story. I think Did, I remember playing uh, that and being like, "This is not bad." It was just like one mission, maybe but it was, obviously yeah. ended up being like. I know. Well, <laughs> because it's like if you're only seeing that first mission, it it no, plays. I don't think the beta but, did have any story. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure it had a one of the missions. It had a I single, remember no, it, playing. It had a single player component, but I don't know if it was the campaign. Okay, maybe it was just. Like I think some it was like a wave based thing. thing. Yeah, you could play it split the screen too. Thing. Okay. Yeah, because I remember playing it with John. I think. All right. So real quick, I found a list of the star cards. From launch day, are these so the ones that got cut? Like some of the I don't know if they got cut. I don't I think don't any know. got actually physically taken out. I okay. think they moved around the rarities and oh, they, they just they took the, the rarest of them instead of putting them in loot boxes. They made them acquirable okay. other ways. Okay, so they had ones for each class, but then they had other ones like they're they're class based. But it's like here's like perfect example. One was called Bounty Hunter. And it was you gain battle points at an increased rate. Battle points were the things the currency that currency needed to spawn as, to spawn, to spawn yeah. as like the Darth Maul and, and shit. vehicles and I mean, heroes. So and if you bought enough of those, shit. you could just get that, and then you would always get to Darth Maul before other people. Yeah. And there was only a limited number of times. Yeah, you could be Darth I was going to get match. into that. That was pretty. Yeah, that, that kind of broke a lot. Uh, improved thermal detonator. Oh, yeah. Improved thermal oh, detonator yeah. with larger blast radius and shorter recharge time. 
Mm. So that's just like your grenades are set to, you know, like a cooldown instead of like a yeah. mount. So, yeah. Some of that stuff, man. God, I totally... The engine cooldown for the Starfire ones apparently a big deal because okay. it changes your ma- literal maneuverability totally, and ability to get away from people. I totally forgot, regenerate, by the way. Regenerate health faster. That's, one. Pretty, that's the yeah. one I was talking about that's the yeah. super rare well, one, I not the shield. The, the yeah, one the that bothered health. me was I remember in the beta they had, I don't know if they had more than, than one level, but they had one that had aircraft in it and one of the star cards was to like turn tighter and have like evasive That's maneuvers. That's what he's talking about, yeah. Okay, yeah, so it yeah. was like... And it's just like, oh yeah, because you used your engine, like you have like a meter. Yeah. To use to... yeah. But like the thing is, cool, all in all cool concept, not cool to have them acquirable by spending by money. a currency advantage. I mean, it's interesting I mean? because like Call of Duty is one of the last remaining bastions of a game where you're actually unlocking equipment and weapons and attachments rather than just cosmetic stuff. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But like they still found a way to balance that where like some of the first guns that you get are still oh, like, yeah, applicable down the line. Yeah. Same thing with Battlefield. It's bad design though because like if you have, if everybody's got, but it didn't bother if everybody's people in a then, ship, you know? but your ship just turns tighter, there needs to be a disadvantage to things like that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, oh, your thermal detonators have a wider range, but your cooldown is increased, right? Not decrease yeah. the cooldown and yeah. make them more and, powerful. That's, like, yeah, because that's gun the shoots longer of, and it's more accurate. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the Call of Duty thing is they all have stats, so their later guns and earlier guns are just as good and just as the bad options. and different. Yeah, Not just go. Oh, I'll put the best. By the way, thing I on. totally fucking forgot that Battlefront One had the giant floating tokens. Yes. So everybody yeah. would just run for it or camp there, so you could spawn as like an ATSD or something. But what was funny is. Is that that already goes against the whole thing of Battlefield where there's just like yeah, shit, shit everywhere. Yeah, there's shit everywhere to hop in and out of. But also, like, people didn't respond to that very well in the first game, and then like, all right, we got you. And then it was this instead. Yeah. And I remember like the beginning of the game, it would just be people. Like it was Oh, there are still those yeah. like floating things in Battlefront 2, though. Oh, were there? Yeah. Okay. Like, I wasn't uh, sure. That goes back in later. Okay. But, uh, but there but there were things that you could spawn as like was that just hero shit, or because they had slightly, they had different tiers of stuff too? It's like you could be a dark trooper, yes, and then yes, like Darth Vader. Yeah, you could like yeah. pick your things. Oh, yeah, too. Okay. Right, you could so. be a Chewbacca. <laughs> so on the- a the Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> no, he a, costs the- more points. Oh, okay. yeah. You could be a Chewbacca, but the Chewbacca was double the points. <laughs> <laughs> so double on, uh, on November 9th, if you had EA access, yeah. which was just Game Pass, but it had Burnout. I wish. I don't even know if it did at that time. It might have just yeah, been it mad. Does it does now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you could begin playing Battlefield 2 early. Yeah, they still doing that. It's so Battle hard Front to keep two. up. With. Battlefront 2. Yeah, I just wrote BF2 you after a while, <laughs> so it's gonna it might happen Yo, a couple yeah, more BF2. times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you could play it early, and the worst of player fears had come true. Like you said. Yeah. There were two currencies. Credits, mm-hmm. which could be gained by playing the game online naturally, and I also think, you could find I, credits in loot boxes. I think you could also get some for completing the single player as well. Yes, which they you, later changed. Yeah. But yeah, the, you could get credits for that and yeah. doing milestones. I think. Oh, as well. okay. That's the in-game challenges or they're dailies. Yeah. Oh, they're dailies. And space credits, crystals. Yeah, that's the which can only be purchased with real, real money. money. So, both currencies could be used to open loot boxes. That's what they fucked up. Yeah, like... So, why does this suck so bad? <laughs> well, let's get into how the game actually works. Yeah. These star cards I had mentioned earlier were a core mechanic of the gameplay, and they had a few rules. You could craft new cards or upgrade ones you already had with crafting parts. This was a sub-currency gained by milestones. That's what I remember. And yeah. also some in loot boxes. Yeah. Um, in order to stop players from just crafting the best shit right away, because why wouldn't you? You know, mm-hmm. the more rare cards required you to have a certain overall ranking, which is just your general level ranking that you gain oh, from okay. playing online. Yeah, because you can get cards that yeah. you can't use yet yeah. and stuff like that. And yeah. a class card level. Which was determined by the number of cards you had for that related class. So confusing. Were there certain yes. cards that only worked on certain classes? Yes. That's all, that's all of it worked. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So, all I'm going uh, okay. to hand this over to Heather Alexandra, who's a writer yeah, yeah. at Kotaku. Um, and she has a quote that pretty much sums it up better than I ever could. Like, I yeah. was going to write one of these on my own, and then when I was reading through this, I was like, this, sums this, it is, up, just, yeah. this is pretty much as good as it gets. <laughs> quote. Let's say someone spends ninety nine ninety nine or a hundred dollars for mm-hmm. us people who are not assholes. Or it's ninety nine. Um, <laughs> for a ton of crystals and opens all of their crates. By the end of that process, they will likely have acquired a few rare cards that grant noticeable bonuses and give them a competitive edge at launch. 
They will also increase their card levels for their class, removing one of the barriers for crafting <clears throat> upgrades. Throughout that process, they'll also get countless crafting parts to stockpile, so the only thing that prevents them from crafting the best cards is their rank. They'll spend a few, uh, spend a handful of hours in multiplayer matches, already equipped with better cards than every other player, yeah. and quickly increase their rank. If they've planned ahead and have enough crafting parts, they will immediately be able to craft the best cards in the game. In other words, you can quite literally pay money for a statistical advantage in Star Wars Battlefront 2. Just perfect. End quote. Just perfect. That last line, really. Yeah. You can literally pay money for a statistical yeah, advantage. That, in that's the crux of everything, just being like, yes, this is how. That this is works. literally the crux. Can, and, and I assume you also get more, you, you rewarded more for winning. Like, it's so. Yeah. Naturally, you would just keep getting even. More. More. <laughs> Rich get richer. Yeah. So I found a part of Polygon article where a guy goes through, he's just kind of doing like a, I spent $100 and got a bunch of loot crates, and he oh, did man, like a I complete statistical that. breakdown. You should look at it. It's a lot of just like him being like, I got this, and if I, uh, he was doing a lot of like figuring out his best value, so most of the article is like an absolute boring math slug, <laughs> where he's just like- It's like targeted for people who yeah, are looking for that information. You can get this much, this much, for this much, this much. Okay. It's very statistical analysis. Yeah. But basically, he opens up a bunch of crates and finds out that eventually you hit like a wall of what you can actually get out of it. Kind of like- an Overwatch, you know what I mean? You open up and you're like, oh, cool, yellow, purple, purple. Eventually you're and it's just like, white, 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 sticker, oh, sticker, yeah, sticker, yeah. quote, 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 you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's kind of like that kind of thing. Yeah. So, no matter if you play straight or pay, it seems that the game's predatory and unbalanced economy was a downright garbage system that benefited only EA's bank accounts. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, players were about to get very vocal about another major issue with the game's <sighs> systems. Yeah. So, when you think of Star Wars iconic characters, who do you think of? Besides Star Trek Binks? IG88. <laughs> yeah, IG88. <laughs> the, is the that the long head robot guy yeah. who looks like a stovepipe? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's yeah. the name of the diaper guy? What? The, the assassin wearing the diaper. Oh, uh, Jack J Dengar? What's his Dengar? name? I don't is it Dengar? I don't remember. <laughs> Dengar? It's a Pokemon. I think, I, I think Robot Chicken did its tire sketch is based around that guy. Because like, cause it's if, if you were into those terrible Star Wars action figures from the 80s, they just made them out of every single character. Like if somebody's oh, yeah. on screen and like half cut off for a split second. So I J Wait, Jack Rendar? Fuck, what the fuck is... I'm no, Dash Rendar is the dude from I'm Shadows of the Empire. Star Wars diaper guy. Guy and see if it comes he's like, up. It's literally like an extra wrapped in toilet paper. <laughs> he's in the same scene as IG88 too, which makes it even. And the lizard work. guy. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, Bosk. Is yeah, Bosk. No, Bosk no, is the dude that Bosk? Princess Leia was dressed up. I used to know all this shit. Yeah, what the hell? Look up all the bounty hunters from that scene. Yeah, even though only one of them matters. The yeah, 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 what did you get? Dengar. Wait, I was right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, wait, I love the idea of that scene because it's just like it's like, all right, it let's, is, it is which of hero just... shall we pick? And then it's just like a stick figure, like a guy <laughs> with like a club, and it's just like you with all your armor. I like, always choose like... the guy with the most expensive costume. <laughs> like, it looks like he's a part of this movie. <laughs> Not the dog on Empire because it's the ship, but no, that, yeah, that scene but that is, is hilarious. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> All the, these puppets and like a, a cardboard <laughs> stand just falls over. Like, alright, sorry. No, I, I'm not. I'm not gonna interrupt you at all here because uh, I see what's coming ahead on this page, and no, it's, it's okay. pretty much the most bullshit part of this entire thing. It's yeah, oh, that's but fantastic. We need a good laugh. Where, yeah. <laughs> Before you get into this. So, uh, unlike the first <laughs> Battlefront, where you had to stumble upon tokens and to unlock these heroes, you know yeah. what I mean? It was made a bit easier in Battlefront 2 by reaching a certain point threshold, which is how it was in the original Battlefront 2. You reach a certain point threshold and then a hero was unlocked. Yes, so that you could because heroes so. were not in the first uh, game. I don't think the very very first one. Um, I don't remember. No, no. Do, so in Battlefront mode, I don't. In Battlefront one, the original Battlefront yeah, one. Yeah, two thousand and fours, which was on the Xbox, not one, but the original <laughs> Xbox. Oh my God damn it! I hate. Uh, it, yeah, if you hit, uh, if your team hit a certain point threshold, Gear you spot. could spawn. Depending on what map you were on, you would spawn. So, like, if you were on a yeah. if you were on a original trilogy map, it'd be Luke and Vader, and then that otherwise it'd be Obi Wan and Darth Maul. They're they're still kind of keeping that consistency, but you didn't control them in one. 
Oh, you didn't. They, they were, were just they be were there. AI controlled. Oh, they would just okay. be there. Okay. And, and they were also indestructible. Right. Yeah. It yeah. Was okay. I do remember this. My friends found a way to kill them. Just push them off the map. Which or was that they had Glitch knockback them? damage, but they didn't take any health damage. They didn't get stunned or anything. They they would get knocked back by grenades, so we would just all pile up, corner them. And then throw grenades at their feet until they bounced over the edge of Cloud That's City. Cool. That's how I used to defeat the agents in the Matrix games that yeah. were undefeatable. <laughs> Sorry, no, I said I wouldn't cut you off. No, but, it's okay. But the, no. the one thing I always hated so much is uh, in the in the new Battlefront uh, when the heroes are in there, they don't have a death animation. They just bow. They just kneel. They yeah, kneel. Fuck. It's so weird. So you like they'll finally kill Luke or Vader, and they'll do this like Jackie Chan like. I, it might so, actually be that in the original too, because I was playing a heroes match today, like heroes really? versus heroes, which is so much fun in the original. It's like lightsabers flying yeah, everywhere, yeah. <laughs> like fifty of them just flying on. Like, Star you see, like, Wars 10 branded, Vaders, like flying yeah, around. is it like some Star Wars branded thing that you can't like clip Luke with a Tie Fighter and have him ragdoll into the sun <laughs> yeah, or something? Right? Yeah. All right, so, like I said, you had to unlock them by reaching a certain point threshold. However, reaching that threshold was only one part of it. You also had to unlock the hero. So, Oh, right, like, even if you had enough credits, it wouldn't yeah. matter. Until Heroes you... were unlocked by those credits we mentioned earlier. And some of the most recognizable and important characters in the Star Wars universe, such as his main characters, Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader, you know, fucking Star Wars, yeah, who? they were priced at the highest, at 60,000 credits. Now, that number doesn't necessarily mean anything to you unless we know how <laughs> easy these credits are to acquire. But we know you can get them from loot boxes, which already creates an issue. Mm -hmm. Players would soon find out that on their own, and then further confirmed by testing of one disgruntled player, that based on the average length of matches and credits acquired by them, it would take close to 40 hours each to unlock the characters. Jesus. Not to mention other heroes like Chewie and Leia who were priced around 40,000 credits. How much was Wedge and Tilly's? Yeah. How much was Stove Top Pipe guy? <laughs> He might be the game now, for all I know. I don't know. Like, I have no idea. Yeah, so 40 hours each to unlock these characters. Jesus. I also just realized that um, Star Wars Battlefront 1 came out in 2015, and that was only the original movies, and then 2 came out alongside, like, around the same time as Last Jedi, and it had they were very heavily promoting all these, like, new yeah. people you could play as, too. Yeah. So players were understandably <laughs> angry. Besides yeah. the heroically soul-crushing grind that would be required just to play some of the most general characters in the franchise, <laughs> yeah. the implication that if you purchased loot boxes and got credits quicker led to the conclusion that this overpricing was a blatant attempt to drive players into purchasing the in-game currency to more quickly access the content that most players thought shouldn't be behind a paywall in the first place, <laughs> yeah. or at the very least, more accessible with your in-game actions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, as I mentioned earlier about that guy who spent the $100 on loot boxes, it didn't seem like even that netted enough to buy heroes under the absurd pricing. <laughs> he said, like, after all that, he had, like, enough cred credits to buy a couple of heroes under the newer pricing after they upgraded it. <laughs> so what? Yeah. You either grind forever... <clears throat> Or pay, and neither really gives you a sustainable way, in the way to gain these heroes. So then why, if not to just squeeze? Mm. Um, you gotta earn it. Yeah, EA yeah, says yeah. it'll make you feel like... This, <laughs> feel good about yourself. Yeah. Be proud. This debacle inspired the post I mentioned at the top of the episode. The I paid $80 and I can't even unlock Vader guy. <laughs> Um, yeah, because there, there was a fucking special edition of the game that had Darth Vader on the cover, yeah. and you, you and bought then, it, you didn't get it. <laughs> yeah, and then they'll add the EA's uh, subsequent response, the most hated Reddit of all time comment, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So, shortly after, EA lowers the prices of its heroes in response to the backlash. Luke went from 60000 to 15000 I think Vader did too. Now obtainable if you spent $100 on loot boxes Only and a measly 15 hours to, <laughs> or so to grind. And, this, and that was also at the same time that they lessened the credits that you got for beating the game by 75% too. Yes, they did it at the exact same time. Yeah. I didn't put that in there because I was like, ah, whatever, but you're right. It's true. Yeah. It's absolutely it's true. Like, all right, so they, they had a bunch of different multiplayer modes, and I think there was one maybe dedicated like solely to the heroes, but most of the modes that were the most popular, like Conquest and Assault, required you, I guess like the first game, to like obtain a certain amount of in-match points to spawn as them, yeah. which considering their... Like, strength would be fine, except every other player was also trying to do the exact same thing. Yeah. So the whole team is racing to play as Vader for a 20-minute round, then one person gets them 15 minutes in, then everyone else has to wait for 
them to die yeah. till when they eventually are out, like, minutes later, so they can slam the button like the fucking rat feeder seconds before the match is over. Like, the game's over. Like, here's the donkey video where, like, he spends the whole match <laughs> trying, trying to, to spawn. Yeah. He, like, becomes Darth Maul, and then it just cuts off. <laughs> like, it's... Yeah, it's it's such a shitty oh, system. Oh, and all that only takes 15 hours to get, <laughs> yeah, to get there <laughs> in the first place. And that's the upgrade. Not, yeah. the, not the original 40 yeah. hours. Wasn't that also the amount that reviewers saw and then they upped yes. it before the game came so, out? So, like, the embargo, like, the, the game was already reviewed at that point. So, yeah. like, because, I mean, and people were already playing it because of EA Access or whatever. Yeah. So it was like all those prices got switched. And by the time that thing hit the shelves for people like us, it wasn't even the same. Like, I know games change, like, and evolve, but that felt kind of gamey as mm-hmm. well. Like, yeah. like, I mean, there's... Maybe I'm connecting dots that aren't there, but it almost feels a little premeditated. Like, hey, we're going to get this out to the people that... Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if it was. Yeah. All right, so this is a random-ass story (laughs) smacked right dab in the middle of this whole thing. Um, I'll touch on it a little bit um, because Detective Jason Schreier... Yeah, he's got his hat on, his magnifying uh, glass at the ready. ...who looked into it, and he wrote an article about it. You should read it. It's called The Curious Case of the EA Game Dev Who Said He Received Death Threats. Holy fuck, I do remember this. I couldn't recall the connection when you brought this up yesterday. So, on November 13th, Twitter user BigSean66, with a profile reading Game Dev at EA, Mm -hmm. tweets... Quote, so I'm up to seven death threats and over 1,600 individual personal attacks now, quote, or sorry, uh, parentheses, and yes, for legal reasons, I'm keeping track, close parentheses, and why, you might ask, because of an unpopular feature in a game, end quote. This was retweeted several hundred times, eventually covered by news outlets such as Yahoo, BBC, USA Today, Vice did an editorial, and CNBC had a headline about it. So a lot of that going around. That story, I mean, just like... Yeah, absolutely. Um, So a lot of people rallied to this guy because this is a good cause. No one likes to see a community of people become so heated that they resort to threatening someone over their role in a creative endeavor. So, like, all this... Press it about it is like, justified yeah. because this is like right in the middle of this. Like people are just angry. EA is just jerking yeah. them around. Pay to win. Fucking you know can't have Vader. Grind your life away. Buy and loot boxes. Is spend capitalizing money. it for who knows? Yeah. Yeah. For what? So <laughs> um, Jason Schreier starts looking into this profile and starts to find weird things. Um, like this guy just gets involved in weird arguments online. They always bring up their EA employment and odd, uh, semi-unprofessional tweets. Mm-hmm. So nothing inflammatory from what I could see. Like nothing was weirdly racist <laughs> no, you, you or anything. Just mean like, like, not, yeah, yeah, it just doesn't seem. It's just none of it seemed very professional. It all yeah. seemed weird. So besides that odd behavior, there was contradiction. One month in a tweet, he stated he had only been working for the company for a few months, and then later, like only like a week or two, or maybe a month later, he was replying to someone else's industry anniversary. <laughs> like they were like, "Oh, it's my ten year anniversary for whatever game company." He said, "Could you like, keep congrats, a story straight? Uh, yeah. I'm coming up on my four year anniversary." <laughs> this is just shortly after saying he had only been working yeah. there for a few months. Um, so Jason Schreier eventually gets a hold of Big Sean sixty six after reaching out multiple times. Yeah, people wanted to see what was going on with the other thing, because now there's a... Yeah, it's... Yeah. A guy is receiving death threats for, He's got a lot you of know, a, a bunch of this garbage. Yeah. So after reaching out for a while, he gets a reply saying that he'd be willing to talk if everything is off the record. So Schreier starts off very sympathetic to receiving the threats. He's like, hey, you know, we'll do it off the record. He's yeah. like, look, um, I've received death threats myself. He relates, you know, he mentions personal yeah. attacks he's received. He's had to talk to other people about this before. Yeah. yeah. So then he goes on and says, hey, I got to ask this tough question. Do you actually work for EA? Fuck. Because he had, he had already investigated all this weird yeah. stuff. Sean never replied again. In Mm. fact, the day after, his Twitter profile no longer had any mentions of anything about EA or employment there. What was his mo- Yeah, because you can just, like, you can just, like, put whatever thing you want on that header bio there, really. He was followed by EA employees and, like, heads and things like that. That's such a big company that other people probably assume that he did. Like, because I don't think legally a company can even stop you from doing that, which is crazy. I saw, like, there was a later case a few years ago where someone was like, I'm a contract writer for... IGN and GameSpot and all this stuff and people are like found out that like we can't find any evidence that like they published any of your articles because you can just do that like yeah, you can exactly. type in your like 
but I don't know what he was. Was he a super fan just I trying have to no like? No idea, dude. So he digs around yeah. some more, checking Facebook and LinkedIn, and puts a bunch That's of smart. stuff together. Some pictures from another social media out of one of his social medias from the inside of EA offices, and they were actually posted by Visceral Games Twitter feed months earlier. Like pictures he had of like at work posted by Visceral oh, Games yeah, yeah. earlier. See if he's in the um, credits of that game. And apparently, <laughs> uh, one of the other ones was from the offices they used to bring in focus testers. This leads me oh, to believe he this guy that. was just like a focus tester one time, and it was just like, I work, I work for, for EA yeah. online, and then just people talk like, I work for EA, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, I've... Because it makes you cool. I have you met know? people who have done that, who have participated in those kinds yeah. of studies, and then be like, I was a consultant for, you know, you know like... Yeah, uh, so he gets like a picture of the guy eventually from other people. Uh, so he goes to EA with a name, a photo, and all the info he got he acquired from either digging around his own or from friends and followers of Big Sean, who actually contacted Kotaku after the original <laughs> article, were, and were like... Like, hey, we know more about this person. So EA <laughs> said that no one that they could think of by that likeness works or had ever worked at EA. And then that was the end of it. No one ever found yeah. out what the deal was, if he ever worked there, what his reason was. No one got the phone number yeah. for the Burger King that he... Yeah. No, I'm just I thought it was a weird, interesting, no, center yeah, story that's, that's kind of in the middle of this. Like, and, yeah. and like you said before, this was in the middle of the shitstorm... And it was only stirring the pot Absolutely, even more. So yeah. it's just like because now it's like, oh, you're threatening people over yeah. this. Like, is it that? Blah blah blah. That became a poster for like, this is video games in 2017. Where yeah. are we? Yeah. So back to Battlefield, <laughs> uh, Battlefront Two. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was going to. <laughs> Around this time, the Belgian Gaming Commission begins to look into Battlefront and Overwatch right, as a yeah, really to see if loot boxes constitute as gambling, which they think is bad for minors. Um, I used to play cards and drink rum all the time when I was 14, and I turned out okay, but. Besides my alcoholism. <laughs> so, How's your anxiety doing? It's, it's horrible. Uh, it's all anxiety <laughs> thing anyway, so wait, shut what, up. <laughs> what kind of, wait, what kind of card? Wait, what's that? Wait, what kind of cards? Oh, like poker. Oh, right. like, no, I was hoping you'd, I, I didn't know if you were going to be like, yo, magic. fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Pokemon, dude. Was, Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> So I'm not going to get into this too much because that that is yeah. a part of the loot box story. I just figured I'd bring it wait, up. What did, um, on topic. what did they call loot boxes recently? Do you remember the w- surprise mechanics? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, surprise mechanics. Was that what it was? I think yeah, it was something like that. That's dumb. That was their that was their taking a positive spin on the on the word loop because the the negative connotation behind surprise you, know, you owe us more money. <laughs> <laughs> did did the loot boxes in Battlefront have a special name? That's almost what I always liked about Overwatch. Is it's just straight up called it's a loot, called bo- loot, loot box. box. <laughs> As, but I think like Battlefront probably had some cheeky Star Wars oh, yeah. you know, crates, for, maybe. I maybe don't yeah, know. actually, it probably was a crate. It's, it's like a and... star crate. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> buy, you, you earned a Vader box. Buy, buy my star crate. <laughs> You just go in and there's like uh, like a racially you know offensive guy like buy a star crane. I'm a Star Wars character. <laughs> Why are you dressed like a cowboy? <laughs> that's my favorite thing about Phantom Menace. Still like super racist. The Middle like, Eastern. Yeah. yeah, that was Watto. <laughs> yeah, then Chuck Taylor. That's that, the Star Wars. That Chinese the, alien. Yeah, I was, I was about to say Korean that was alien. that was pretty bad. But I think the uh, the Nemoidians. What was their the? Yeah, that's the. Yeah, <laughs> that talked in the thick. Yeah, um, the droids, the droids. <laughs> which, oh, yeah. which, and they were, oh, yeah. they were <laughs> named. It was like Newt Gunray mm-hmm. and somebody. They were blatantly targeting the politician Newt Gingrich, yeah. and then I forget the other one's name. Oh yeah, it was yeah. Viceroy. Something. Yeah, what? I, don't oh my God, I never put that connection yeah, together. I, I, I didn't the only connection that I, I put was together 10, is in the like... Star Wars, one of the Star Wars Clone Wars cartoons. There are people who look like caricatures of like Jewish people, and they're called the Galactic Banking Clan. <laughs> no, no. And I remember being like, "Holy wow. shit!" Which I made series? I was at the three D one of the two D one. The Samurai Jack one. Okay, yeah. yeah, which is really the, good. Yeah, that was, was the good like, one. Why is this so hard? I really want to find out the name of that other character. I know it was Newt Gunray, uh, which was Newt Gingrich, and then there was uh, another one, and he was also blatantly some Republican. <sighs> So, um, on November 16th, hours before the game's official release, DICE GM Oscar Gabrielson posts on an EA blog. It says a lot of things about listening and learning and blah, 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 blah. But most importantly, it says, quote, We hear you loud and clear, so we're turning off all in-game purchases, end (laughs) quote. We couldn't get away with it. We tried. (laughs) 
Still, no fucking vision for that game. Like, it's the same shit with so many other titles that have made statements like that. It really just felt like greed. Like, taking advantage of nerds who are willing to pay for Star Wars. Yeah. It's like There's a great article title. I don't know who it was by. Either. Like, it was on some gaming website, but it was titled, like, EA was so worried about making money, they forgot to make a fun game. Or something like that. <laughs> it's a little... Uh... So, when the game launched on the 17th, the ability to purchase crystals, the in-game currency, to be bought with real money would temporarily be turned off. They made a big deal about it temporarily. Uh, and they say that the ability to purchase them will return later in an unspecified date. This sudden move was sparked just hours before when its announcement when Jimmy Pataro, Pataro, chairman of Disney's Consumer Products and Interactive Media Division, called EA and, from what I could tell, forced their hand into removing the controversial currency for purchasing loot boxes because all this bad press was poorly reflecting on the Star Wars <laughs> IP. <laughs> But the the funniest part about all this, and I remember Giant Bomb mentioning this too in their podcast around the time it came out, was that like the game was fucked. Like you can turn off the ability to buy, but when you design, it build too around when you design it. a game yeah. to force you to spend currency because it's so unfun to play, if you don't, and you turn off the currency, then you just have an unfun game <laughs> yeah. that you can't buy your way out of. What's funny too is they had those physical cards ready to go as well. Like they like those were pulled before even hitting the shelves. Like it was fucking crazy. Like. Uh, they, uh, some of them got out there. People some, were able to buy them, and they worked. Yeah, like yeah, because they, they couldn't. But there were there were photos from like GameStop employees that got them in a shipment, and then were instructed to not put them out. Like this was all planned. Like it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So it seems like that dystopian corporation Disney can and will do anything to protect its image of their property. So my hopes are Jar Jar Binks' fleshlight are damned in the future. <laughs> I bet that exists. Um, Jar Jar's come up <laughs> way too many times. So. They had that one lollipop where you sucked on his tongue. Yes, my mom designed that. She Did had, she yes. really? Uh, no, all right. So oh. about, no, she didn't design it. She had the sculpt. Yeah. She, no, no, she did not design it. Hey, man, whatever you want. No, so she, my yeah. mom worked my uh, worked for a company that uh, I won't name that was contracted to make a lot of the merchandise for Star Wars Episode One when that was coming out. Is that, is that a yes, picture? Of it? It. That's it. That's it. Oh my God. No, I, it's so. We need to go back to my house because there, there is it's sitting somewhere in there. It's so bad. So she would get these designs and then have to make uh, the molds of them and then you know touch them up and, and yeah. send them back. Sorry, I should not have said design. Like that was not. But it, but I I just remember just like look, are you fucking silly? Like what is this? All right. Randy was into tongue and Jar Jar Binks when he was a kid or whatever. I, I probably I, I probably tried one. There was a button you pull that opened his mouth. You could close his mouth over the lollipop yeah. to keep it protected for later and then you hit the button and open it up so you can suck on his tongue. <laughs> I think it was like strawberry or cherry flavored. I don't remember. <laughs> tongue flavored. <laughs> they, listen, they were banking. Fucking they were Christ. really banking on Jar Jar. Just they were. Just He's the, the new Ewok. <laughs> right. I need to find that. I, 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 like, I want to message her right now and be like, yo, do you have that fucking Church our tongue lie by. She'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And you guys all know what you're talking about because I'm definitely putting that in the. Yeah, 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 that's gotta yeah. be in there. All right, so um, this is my favorite part. A Lucasfilm spokesman said that they support EA's decision to remove in-game purchases. <laughs> uh, which is funny, because it's like Disney saying, yeah, I support the decision that I just told you to make. I own everybody. Remember when I screamed at you on the phone 20 minutes ago? Yeah, it's like, make this decision. And then I'll get one of the other people that works for me to go, I agree with my own decision. <laughs> Uh, the, star, the spokesman said, Star Wars has always been about the fans, and whether it's Battlefront or any Star Wars experience, they come first. Sure. Which, all of this, by the way, was their fault, for two reasons. Oh, yeah. So, A, everything we, we've been talking about this whole time, at some point, was previously approved by them in the first place. Yeah. Like, at some point in production, Disney signed off on it. And then, B, apparently artists at DICE came out later, like, post-launch, and said that there weren't many options to monetize as per the pressure from EA due to Disney's strict rules on things like cosmetics. Like, they had an aesthetic to maintain with Star Wars, and they didn't want no silly hats. Like, yeah. which is why all the stuff became stat-based 
in the first, like, not, yeah. not that that's defending them at all, but still, like, their hands were tied, too. So oh, it's for just sure, like, for sure. Yeah, you, it, yeah, they don't want a Jar Jar Binks lollipop gun. Like, yeah, it's yeah, like, listen, a, we, the sto- if you want all the stormtroopers to stay white stormtroopers, and we can't decorate them in any way, what are we supposed to do? Yeah, you gotta stay white, man. <laughs> <It's>, right? <laughs> right? That's not what... <laughs> the bad guy is black. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, yeah, that I criticize them all I want, but like if I had EA breathe down my neck being like, you gotta make this as addicting as possible so people spend the yeah. most money. It's gotta be a platform. And then Disney's like, but nothing cosmetic. Everybody's gotta yeah. look the same, but you have to change the game. It's like, well, I guess we're changing the gameplay then. Yeah, yeah it's right? not like Siege and Overwatch where everybody's running around dressed like pirates and like <laughs> yeah. whatever. Like, you can't... It doesn't matter. And yeah. it's, it's unfortunate. It really is. I know. Because I'm sure a lot of this stuff you know, was like after artists and programmers worked really hard to like make the guns feel good and make the lighting beautiful and yeah. and have all these sound effects like, you know, work really well together. And it's then... it's a fucking shame, dude. It yeah. really is. Uh, so I'll, I'll close it out with this: all the damage had already been done. The players were already burned. So, like we said, no matter what EA did at this point, they had already proved to gamers that they were more interested in getting every dollar out of their games than actually caring about making them. Which is a complete shame, yeah. because Battlefront 2 is generally a fun game. It looks spectacular, it plays well, it's a lot of fun. I know that because I just bought both of them for $5 <laughs> with all their DLC Sorry, during the Xbox through. Live Summer Sale. <laughs> All the news developers who put endless hours of work into this title did an incredible and often thankless job. That's very true. And it's not so. fair for them or the players that the greed-centric policies not only influence the actual development, but shift the opinions of fans that would otherwise appreciate and enjoy this content. That's well said. A lot, this was all the work of Suits. Yeah. Like re- yeah like, and, and I do wonder oh, yeah. how long that exclusivity contract with EA is supposed to be like i don't know how long last because and, and if they even regret it with them because they have not produced many titles since starting the partnership and those strangely few games that did come out have not particularly reviewed the best like that first battle for rebuild reboot sold real real well and i was surprised to see that the toxic word of mouth around this actually got so bad out there publicly that it did affect those sales in the long run yeah it's just crazy it's just a shame because it's it's another example of the few trying to take everything from the many and then it affected an actual art project it it stirred up a lot of garbage and it sucks because if they if the systems in this game well said you should have just kept with what you wrote you idiot (laughs) (laughs) sorry talking to me (laughs) if this if this game like came out and didn't have a lot of those systems, it probably would have reviewed and sold well and people would have enjoyed it and had a lot of fun. I, I, like, I it sucks that the narrative was this around I found this it. game. I found it. It's a 10-year deal. 10 years? And it started okay. in 2013. Okay, all right. So they have until 2023, and I guarantee you <clears throat> that neither side is going to want to renew this license. No. So Yeah, because I'm sure that... Uh, EA, oh, by then there'll be a EA's, good Disney game studios EA's project. Oh, yeah. Also, ha- are very unhappy with how this is playing out because the communication between the two of them sounds like I don't think I think EA was probably real excited to have this, and then instead Disney was like, "Yo, here's our rules," and then EA's like, "I don't know if you know how games, games yeah, like <laughs> yeah. are." But but then again, like I'm not, not trying to discredit EA because no. It's, but it's like we're not talking about some fucking general Disney game, dude. Yeah. Like this has to appeal to a larger market, and it has to have a functional system. It can't just be some yeah. fucking. I, no offense, but because people do work on them, but like you know, fucking Disney movie games aren't exactly goddamn gameplay masterpieces, no. dude. I mean, so and, it's like when you're trying to make a real game, the same kind of restrictions just don't always get to apply. Well, they yeah. they they. they handle it incorrectly because the the what what they're doing right now you know at the time of this recording obviously a side note apparently the avengers gameplay that got revealed at e3 behind closed it doors leaked, right? it leaked i watched a little yeah. bit of it how does it look it's apparently supposed to be coming out after gamescom they're going to show it behind closed doors at gamestom and then release it to the public okay it looks all, i, I it assume looks that's all right. why they were holding back to get direct feedback. it looks all right 
But the thing is, like, the way they're handling the Marvel stuff with video games is how they should handle all their properties. Mm-hmm. Which is just like Insomniac's like, yo, we got an idea for a Spider-Man game. Yes. And they make it as one of the best games on the PS4. Contract that shit out. Yeah. yeah. Or license it out, rather. Sorry. Like, because it's... Star Wars is arguably, next to Marvel... Uh, Marvel. Next to Marvel, <laughs> the most valuable property. Yeah. Like, and so it's like that even Star Wars fans didn't react to this well. Like, like people who are already sort of ingrained to, like, consume this stuff and enjoy it. Like... I don't think this game was ever even meant to be targeted at people that as as, are ingrained into games culture as well, we as are. Well, as shitty as it's going to sound, <laughs> like, if you're going to be this evil and monetize every video game this much, there is a tipping point, And EA seems to, like, be <clears throat> blind to that tipping point. Yeah. Or it's like, I mean, this game is a this game is a check mark on the trail of tears Overwatch for EA. Overwatch is a good example of that tipping point because like Can you buy loot boxes with real money in Overwatch? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't even know you could do that until I've done it. recently. Yeah. Yeah. I never knew. But like mm-hmm. I Overwatch, barely open loot boxes. I did it for events back in the in like the the heyday where you like I was trying to collect everything until I realized it was like a fruitless that like yeah. I with like I played that game so much when it first came out I was like I'm going to get everything for my favorite character yeah. and then Overwatch now it's like doesn't can't have keep up. Anything gameplay related at all? Yes, which that is the way to do it. It's all voice lines and costumes. And it's still and very sprays. exploitative of certain people's addictions. Yep. In order to make money, but it doesn't stop the majority of the people from wanting to play your game. No. If you're going to make a multiplayer game and you're going to make it so that some people are just better at the game, and usually the people who are willing to spend money at the game are going to be playing it a lot, and they're going to be better at the game. Yeah, regardless. Already, it's so... Just, it just irks me, because you're absolutely right. It didn't have to be fucking monetized. Why couldn't it just be a game that comes out for $60, and Star Cards are just part of the fucking game, that they come know. in loot boxes, you don't get to buy them? Maybe even Star Cards aren't part of the fucking game. Build a different system. Like, why did it even have to have microtransactions? It seems like something that's ingrained at EA, yeah. specifically, and that kind of, that's just... It's funny, because, like, it could have been... Like Titanfall, which is also an EA published game, and Titanfall did well enough to get a sequel, but like, part of my biggest problem with EA as a company is they're not interested in making a success. And I think they're interested in making a phenomenon. Like that, that's like the only yeah, tier that and also I think to them. Respawn has a bit of they have a big clout. Yeah, they have proven themselves in the so past. So I think too, that's yeah. that explains I mean, Titanfall. So, but so, so is think, Dice though. Like I mean, maybe not the same, but somehow Dice I makes... think I agree with you, Dice. But I think yeah. Dice is way more under. The hand of EA than Respawn. Yes. Did. Yes. I mean they designed yeah. Frostbite, so yeah. So and, I and think they were Respawn, Respawn was just Respawn bought is by them, not. But... Wait, do they own? Does EA own Respawn? EA, now? I believe, does own Respawn. Do they? No, uh, no. Maybe they just published Titanfall. I think they, they, they published bought, Titanfall they one them. and two and Apex and uh, the Fallen Order. The they, might, Order. they might. So I don't. Maybe it's a second party thing. I don't. I don't know. Well, either way, look at how is. they did Bioware. They let them make what they wanted. That's true. To, yeah. You know, but. And yeah, but at the same time, no, they didn't. They did. They don't. They they don't. I was respond. talking about. I was talking about. Oh, okay. Um, oh, you're saying they didn't the let them make what they wanted to? <laughs> no, that's why Anthem sucks. And re- oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot about Anthem. But oh, yeah. God, I forgot about yeah, we'll Anthem. Andromeda. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But and and also that um. Yes. Re- by the way. Respawn games don't use. Respawn is owned by EA. Okay, but yeah, also okay. once again, just cloud. I think Dice yeah. is a lot more under the umbrella, uh, yes. at least a lot more heavily. And I think. I mean, you mentioned Anthem. The thing about Anthem that was that hurt them really bad, and we'll probably get into it at some point, was that they were forced to use the this the, the engine that Dice helped. Yeah. Great. Like, that like, is what hurt that yeah. game. Like, but Respawn doesn't have to which is weird like t- titanfall and apex don't that's a shame use, we can't we, we should maybe we should do an anthem episode i don't know that anthem article is dense, that really good one yeah it's yeah, dense a lot but it's there. still like a really good read also i like your little ending part here also i think you should read it i i wasn't okay. sure because i was going on like an anti-capitalist tirade while i, know, I was writing it's, this it's a good it's, so, like, I, I think it's a good I, I, I wrote it but a little i'm actually extension. looking at this more positively i think yeah than, than uh, you were. i just wrote a little tack on that this whole process unfairly turns gamers and devs against each other uh, when they just want to make content for and play content by each other. Once again, another example of how a few at the top far too often manipulate and disrupt those below them for personal gain. Yeah, and my positive spin on it, because obviously uh, by itself is a, yeah. you know is, is kind of grim, but my is, is that when this stuff breaks, when the facade falls down, then it's like 
you hope to see improvement. Like, you know, it's just because at the end of the day, even though EA is, EA is a business and needs to make money, if this didn't work, it means that something has to change, and maybe it will change for the better. Yeah, so. if their wallet... but. But the only thing that makes me think not is that they just consistently keep doing I this. Know. Yeah, well, that's because <laughs> yeah, that goes without saying. Yeah. That graveyard is pretty immense. By the well, hopefully, I mean, Jedi Fallen Order, I don't think has is loaded with microtransactions. Maybe well, that'll... no. Now that the funny thing about the game is they're taunting it as like not being Battlefront essentially. They're like single players back. <laughs> like you know, it's like really weird. It's like but... at E3, it's like one of their. One of our selling points: no microtransactions. Yeah, no, literally the <sighs> thing that you fucking yeah, yeah. fuck you, fuck yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, that's literally what they did. They came out there like, yo, there's no loot boxes in this game. Can you believe it? It's like, no, you don't get to say that. I don't. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I want Star Wars to be good again. I like. I just like. I part of when I mentioned Force Awakens earlier, part of the reason I was going about it is because I like the charisma and charm that that movie had, and I want the games to have it too. I want the property to have it too. Now when I see Star Wars merchandise, I'm just like, ugh. Like, yeah. I, you know, like, I'm just like... <laughs> I understand. And, yeah. Well, that's it. But that's it. I think that is our story of EA... Star Wars. I was gonna make a Disney's <laughs> Disney's Star Wars Disney. Disney's EA Star Wars, but I was like, that's just like that the Red Letter Media joke. <laughs> <laughs> the Disney's Marvel's Avengers Age of Ultron two or whatever it is. Oh no, it's yeah, it's right, yeah. <laughs> Disney's <laughs> Marvel's <laughs> Avengers two Age of Ultron. <laughs> The one thing I think is the most shameless about all this, I'd be remiss if I didn't say it, uh, was that both the reboot and this game have EA's logo in, in the, the middle logo? of the title. Yeah. Like, they're, EA is already on the box, and they're still just like, Star Wars EA Battlefront. To, like, and yeah, that makes me feel stupid for not remember like thinking about the lucas arts thing earlier but i just think it's imagine if every game company did that like you're not idio kojima like yeah like, exactly at least ea didn't tank lucas arts they just dismantled them <laughs> i mean they dismantled uh ea black box and visceral and max's and who else am i forgetting disney dismantled LucasArts. oh yeah disney yeah, disney, no, disney, you know i didn't mean yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. sorry i was like, <laughs> at least disney about... didn't tank lucas arts they were just like <laughs> 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 throw them away i miss yeah. lucas arts but yes that's it. That's... Anybody got any? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> why, why are you all looking at me? <laughs> Do you want to plug some stuff? Uh, yeah, I've already talked too much. All right, fine. <laughs> How's that throat feeling? <laughs> Pretty dry. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm. You can follow us on social media at Hot Button Cast. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We have a website, hotbuttoncast.com. Go there, check out some cool photoshops, and you can get links to our YouTubes and Podbean and iTunes and Spotify and Google Play. Did you put the Mario commentary up there? Mario commentary yeah. is up there. Nice. Check that out. Go yes. there and download that. Yep. <laughs> we should. You should have a raw, like downloadable file. Is that up there? Just like a file, somebody can download, That's not through a, a podcast idea. app. Yeah, we'll have to look into that. Yeah, uh, you can do that through Podbean. <laughs> okay, cool, I, I'm cool. pretty sure. Just in case you want to do it off the computer instead yeah, of yeah. the app. Yeah. I think if you go to Podbean, there's a download link under the player. Yeah. And you can download just the MP3. <laughs> Cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I think those are the plugs. Stay tuned for our um, inevitable loot box episode that will come out two After years from now yeah. when they're made illegal and the great loot box war happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Millions dead. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I will gladly put my life on the line. Is this before or after? Or Wait, is this the... before or after the Area 51 thing? I'm so confused. <laughs> I'm, now. I'm so confused. That's what's really in there, dude. It's just a bunch of loot boxes. Shit. <laughs> All right. And with that, we're out. <laughs>